This is Russ McClay, and this is hopefully a short tutorial on how to make an animation in Mandible 3D. We've opened Mandible 3D, and there is the default fractal loaded integer power. To make an animation, and in this one, we'll just demonstrate how to kind of zoom in on a fractal or in a fractal space. And Mandible gives us two tools to do this. There is the animation tool and there is the 3D navigation tool. First thing we need really is the navigation tool. So it's so so excellent. I definitely love this because I've used Mandible 3D when it didn't have this. And uh, so this is the 3D nav view. The other tool is the animation tool. The animation tool has a lot of stuff here. It can be very overwhelming and confusing at first, but basically we have a timeline up here and we're going to create keyframes. So you just basically you you set the fractal where you want it and then you you click on uh, in the navigation window, you click this button or you click F. And that will um, make a keyframe. It's like taking a snapshot. And then what you do is you go back here and you zoom in and or whatever you want to do, ro anything you want to, any transformation that you want to make to this fractal pretty much with uh, some limitations. And then you again, you click this button or hit F and make another snapshot. Now what happens is you start to, uh, getting more, you know, however many keyframes that you want. Each one of those snapshots we can call a keyframe. Now here this number is pretty important because this says that, that first snapshot you make and then if you zoom in a little bit or whatever you do any kind of transformation turn or go up or down uh, and then you you save another keyframe it's going to be uh, 50 frames away from that so what that means is that you take a snapshot you zoom in a little bit you take another snapshot Mandible 3d will will make a smooth uh, will output it a series of images that you can call frames that you could put together in any kind of animation tool, any kind of animation maker, um, which is beyond the scope of this little view. So let's see how this works in practice and in process. Uh, first of all, I'm going to close everything except for the main window, and there you are. And you click, I okay, this is how I would do it. I would go 3D nav, okay, cool, there's my my fractal and I also want to open up the animation maker which is going to be in the background I'm working kind of in a small window so um, if you're working a full screen you have a lot more real estate to set all these windows up let's just do this for now okay so we have the the main window here we have the 3d nav window here and we have the animation window there and I'm just gonna you know do a simple zoom in I'm gonna click on W or hit W on the keyboard, click on this arrow, bang, 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 okay? Let's go in a little bit more. I'll just click it a few times, okay? Now, oh, well, heck, I didn't do it right, did I? Let's load the parameter again. We'll start at the beginning. The first thing you need to do is hit that animation keyframe to get the thing uh, for the first frame, and there we have it, okay? So, kind of missed that point. No sense in making a new video. Let's just continue. <laughs> so now, made the first frame and now I'm going to uh, click on that arrow that walking in arrow and I'm going to click animation keyframe again and now I'm going to um, let's say I want to move over to the side a little bit so we'll just kind of scroll over track over to the side a little bit so now I've kind of zoomed in at one level and now I'm moving over to the side and I just click this now because I'm going to make another keyframe. Okay, the, what we'll see now is we see there are three because I clicked that button there three times. It is when we opened the, the, the fractal, clicked it, went to the next, uh, we zoomed in a bit, then I clicked it again and then we kind of scrolled over to the left a bit. I, I clicked it again. Now if I say render preview, you can see right here in this render preview window uh, what that results as. 
you see it's doing it kind of it's real time and you can save that out as a little gif if you're doing big projects but you can see there it goes nice and smooth you see that it's like zooming in and then just kind of off going off and you can do a lot of really creative things with this I mean it's really amazing the tools they have in Mandible 3d for animations so that's that I hope this helps to understand the idea of using the 3d nav uh, positioning the fractal or your basic not the fractal but your camera I should have used that term you're positioning the camera where you want it to go and that's what all these controls do uh, you're the cameraman and you know you go you can do what you want um, and then after you position the camera you click on animate keyframes so you develop a number of keyframes and you can set how many frames in between each keyframe as you wish 50 is a good number to, to start learning and then after you do all of this very important you select an output folder here okay you know you'd want to use something a little better like you know whatever uh, animation you know uh, the date you know date whatever it is something like that and then after you do that you give it an output folder then you click this button start rendering images and what it'll do it they'll just do it one by one you can see I have three keyframes that equals 150 frames so that means it's gonna take a hundred uh, uh, 50 renderings uh, to fill this folder up with with uh, frames that, that you can then use uh, to make an animation like you can use virtual dub which is free um, I use Sony Vegas sometimes actually I use virtual dub the most um, virtual V I R T U A L D U B it's a free software uh, very kind of primitive but very useful so I hope that helps anybody uh, wanting to do animations in Mandible 3d how to how to achieve this pretty easily and pretty quickly uh, the concepts are basically 3d nav the animation tool and keyframes taking snapshots moving around adjusting another another snapshot and then uh, render out those images into some directory uh, last thing here you can see like for instance because I'm not going to go into all this right now <laughs> on this one you have BMP PNG JPEG BMP is really good to use I think because it's raw but anyhow up to you hope that helps that's it for this one always way too long